This is Bob Payne, Chief Investment Strategist here at Payne Capital Management with this week's market update. This holiday shortened week on the Street of Dreams saw both the NASDAQ and the S&P 500 reach all-time record highs. The S&P 500's rally this year has grown to 17%, with the benchmark registering its 34th record close as investors bet that any economic weakness later this year will be met with a Federal Reserve rate cut. Markets rallied as bond yields fell, precipitated by a slight uptick in June's unemployment rate to 4.1%. Economists expected the jobless rate to remain steady at 4%. Investors hiked their bets on a September interest rate cut, with odds of a quarter-point cut increasing to about 77%. Now that's up from 64% just a week ago. This past week saw significant updates in the manufacturing sector. On Monday, June's ISM manufacturing PMI revealed a sharper-than-expected contraction. Then on Wednesday, May's factory orders showed a monthly decline, contrary to the anticipated small increase. Additionally, the ISM services PMI for June indicated a contraction in the services sector, disappointing economists who had forecasted growth. These indicators suggest that the Fed put is still in effect. As many believe, the Federal Reserve will intervene and implement policies to prevent the stock market from declining beyond a certain threshold. Nonetheless, the first week of July maintained the momentum from June, the second quarter, and the first half of 2024, driven by the exceptional performance of the Magnificent Seven. Today's consensus remains centered on that same Magnificent Seven megatech stocks. However, no sound financial theory suggests that seven stocks alone can form a well-diversified portfolio for building wealth. Now is an opportune time for significant diversification especially since many other asset classes are currently cheaper and some may argue offer greater long-term growth potential. Large cap stocks are trading at a 7% premium to their estimated fair value, while small cap stocks are at a 14% discount. The average growth stock in our growth ETF is trading at a 12% premium to its estimated fair value, whereas holdings in our corresponding value fund are trading roughly in line with their estimated fair value. Non-U.S. stocks now offer significantly more attractive valuations. So please, be cautious when you hear, it's different this time. Shunning diversification has never been prudent.